everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. I uh, just wanted to go over Erlang and uh, the current state of where it's at. Let me just pull up a blog that I just put up uh, just now. Um, okay, so this, this article or this video is basically a summary of all of this, what I just posted with all the links. What I'm going to go over is some interesting topics about uh, I've been digging into Erlang as a language and what it can do. It's, it's really, really powerful. I was going to talk about the F-sharp comparison performance and potential of Google Go and Java. Okay, now this is uh, December 3rd. Yeah, December 3rd. Uh, 2014 so everything changes you know technology anyways let's talk about Erlang now let me go back to <laughs> okay if you're new to Erlang and you need to know what Erlang is I would highly encourage you to watch this video uh, it's called Erlang the movie uh, and it's just gonna go over what Erlang can do and it's it's a fairly old language um, from the 90s I believe uh, from Ericsson who developed it it was really a language for their PBXs, for their communication between their uh, phone switches or PBXs. And uh, basically, uh, it goes over that and shows this Monty Python uh, cheese factor kind of video. Um, but the point, the point's well made <clears throat> in the video. So watch that. So then I, and basically what it shows is that you can use Erlang for uh, communication, possibly an internal database, um, parallelization. It's like a dream language 20 some odd years ago. Uh, for Windows, it may work fine, uh, but it's really designed for Linux and Unix. But, you know, with me, uh, especially the front end charting that I love with something like from Infragistics or even from Dev Express, you know, I want to use a lot of .NET for my, um, my front end stuff. So you know, the question I thought was, how, how do you integrate er, Erlang with C Sharp? So I put up some videos, okay? Um, this one just gives you a highlight of it. Uh, now, this is where it gets really interesting. Uh, now, in my first link, uh, I mentioned this. Uh, the next one is this uh, library for .NET called NDX, I think it's called NDX.Erlang. Um, there's some documentation here on it, um, example uses, uh, the different types of classes that are available in it. It looks really good. Problem is, uh, when you come all the way down here, being December 2nd, was this released on GitHub? No response. They promised this to come out uh, earlier this year, but no but nothing. Uh, and then there's this one called OTP.net, which allows you to use the uh, protocol of Erlang, distribution Prolang in .net. Um, now, this seems to be, hopefully, it's been updated a year ago, which is good. Um, looks like it's been created about four years ago, so there's maybe an option to go with. But as it says here, it says the project is being phased out for the more powerful implementation of Erlang interface for .NET called NFX uh, Erlang. Um, and again, like I said, it was supposed to be out uh, open source for January 2014. Well, no offense to these guys, but we're still waiting. So I guess, um, you know, from this guy, you know, it's, it's a lot of work to put these things out, so respect for that. Um, but... Um, the dilemma is, do you use this for now, switch over the this NFX, and it all comes down to maturity of the library, and, and is it bug free, and so on and so forth. So that's a potential dilemma. If you're gonna start putting this in the code uh, for trading applications, I'm not sure if that's the wise move. Also, here's some documentation on the entire um, set of classes that are available, but again, read this, this preliminary documentation may change. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, um, moving on. Now, I'm going to talk about the performance of Erlang against other uh, languages, specifically with F-sharp. Now, in here, um, 
If you haven't seen uh, Phil Chalfer's presentation on F Sharp we did last night, um, you know, that's a pretty compelling uh, story with uh, F Sharp, but nonetheless, uh, Erlang's a, a pretty compelling language. Um, so, you know, you gotta be mind worthy of that. So, you know, I'm, I'm looking at F Sharp versus Erlang, regardless of the Linux versus Windows battle. Um, but, uh, you know, that's something, you know, you, you will get challenged with. Now, this is the meat. This is the performance of uh, F Sharp, Go, Erlang. And then they also do a comparison with um, Java as well. It's a, it's a really good paper, it gives you a history of all the languages, all the results, and the conclusions. So let me just give you a summary of what I take took away. So in this paper, um, what I came away with, uh, where is it? Okay, right here. In conclusion, they said Erlang's the best for fault tolerance, without a doubt. Um, for Java, it's the fastest in that, which is because of obviously Java is a more popular language, it's more mature, it's better optimized versus the Erlang uh, virtual machine or the shell. That makes sense. Um, but again, using Java as compared to something like Erlang, uh, Java, you know, no different than C++ and even C Sharp, it's hard to maintain and implement. All right. Now, when you get a language like F Sharp, uh, what they said it actually scales better than uh, Erlang, but only on a four core processor. So that's good news if you plan to use F Sharp, but again, you're limited to Windows. So there's always these challenges. Now, there's also a mention of Go. I'm not gonna go on about Go, um, but I will say this, what I've been uh, noticing is that this language from Google um, seems to be, uh, this would be like Microsoft's answer, answer to Python. And this would be uh, Google's response to Python. Now, from what I've been seeing and reading, a lot of people are getting tired of Python's open-ended issues. Uh, I'm not gonna get into that. But um, a lot of people are moving to Go, um, uh, especially web developers. And I've seen more and more you know, dropping uh, Python for Go. I uh, just thought I'd put that out there, but it's, seems to be more specific for web. Now also F Sharp obviously comes up uh, with Phil's uh, presentation um, here. He did mention that there was some, or I think one company is moving away or moving off of uh, F, uh, Python and moving into F Sharp. So that is mentioned in this video. Uh, so we're not here to bash Python of course, but uh, with my experiences with Python, it's just pretty hard to know what, you know, it's basically like picking racehorses, which whatever to go with. Will it be abandoned in a few years? Uh, what will happen to Python? Will this library be uh, supported uh, five years from now? Because, you know, you're building out pretty heavy duty, mission critical uh, trading systems. And um, I've always said that both R and um, Python are really not future-proof. Uh, you can just see the splintering with the Python versions of 2.7 versus Python 3.3. So I'm not really comfortable with the future of Python. But I think Erlang has been around long enough and it's not changing, but there are a lot of really cool use cases for it. Obviously F Sharp with this uh, presentation that went on with uh, Phil, uh, it just shows how easy it is. You can um, integrate languages like R into it so F Sharp is an exciting and a very future-proof language. Not only that, but you also get uh, the ability to leverage off of the .NET uh, framework. So I, I think you know F Sharp could stand for functional, but I'm also looking at future as well because you know Microsoft just recently announced they're open open sourcing a lot of .NET, um, and uh, that's going to be big news for the Mono project for Linux. So who knows where things will be for .NET on Linux and maybe even Mac OS X. So this is something to uh, be on the lookout for. Uh, go again, I don't know. But coming back to uh, Java, let me go back to my notes here. I do get sidetracked quite easily. All right, so we, we talked about Erlang's really good for fault tolerance, no doubt, but 
really only for the Linux and Unix world. Um, Java is definitely um, the fastest, but again, it's hard to implement and maintain. Uh, F Sharp um, scales better, but we also mentioned that uh, it's good if you are able and want or okay to use a .NET framework and leverage off of the endless amount of uh, awesome uh, libraries out there for it. All right, so we cover that. Um, now, concurrency, uh, F Sharp, and, and Erlang are pretty well cool. There's an article here I got listed. Um, so, because it's early December, December 3rd again, uh, I'm going to be doing a whole web webinar on this, uh, on the powwow. I think this is going to be a hot topic to talk about. You know, Erlang, Scala, F Sharp, Perl, .NET, C Sharp, C++, Java. Um, and, and I'm trying to keep it in the realm of, uh, of trading language, uh, sorry, for trading uses in finance, okay? So I just want people to uh, be on the lookout for that meetup next uh, Monday. Yeah, Monday, December 8th. All right, so now um, I've got my own little things on Erlang here on my blog. Uh, as far as I know, you know, you can get Erlang uh, books. Uh, if you do a search for Erlang on my blog, um, I'm also told you could probably maybe learn Erlang in a weekend. But here's some interesting um, uh, case studies that uh, I've, I've come across. Erlang is not only used for telco, or but mission critical, like, um, you know, WhatsApp has used it, uh, Git hub.com is using it. I think apparently the Facebook messaging backend is using it. But specifically for trading, uh, it is used for high frequency trading at Goldman Sachs. Uh, just check out if you need to see that. That's a, a Wikipedia. Uh, but this is all they're going to tell you. So Erlang is definitely used in the high frequency trading environment. That's what's piqued my interest. Now I was also introduced to this um, a library called Cap and Proto. Um, now this is obviously for C++ um, only uh, and it's quite interesting but the funny thing is that there's this Erlang uh, implementation for it or binding. Now this is really Linux just so people realize uh, <laughs> there was a funny comment um, on Windows uh, should you be unfortunate enough to be on that platform <laughs> Uh, there's some bugs, some workarounds, um, and uh, so on and so forth. So it doesn't really um, com compel me to want to use this. The Captain Proto, maybe, I don't know, maybe you can use this as a uh, basis for building um, some kind of RPC uh, layer with uh, serialization. I mean, this has been recommended. Um, so these are all the different options. You can tell it's kind of confusing. Uh, so for me, uh, the way I'm looking at it, um, I'm hoping to hear from people on this because it's really important to me because moving forward, you know, Erlang's really cool. Um, as I said, if there was a way to be able to back end, be able to use Erlang for the communication layer with potentially some kind of internal memory database on top of uh, uh, the communication layer and the protocols and the distribution and the parallelization, the concurrency that Erlang brings in the Linux world, it's awesome. Um, and uh, if there's a way to um, uh, you leverage it, I guess, uh, versus uh, using it for the front end with uh, things like I've demoed this infra just infra logistics um, library with um, the front end uh, for charting, for just a complete <clears throat> front end application with equity trading application that you'll find in Infogistics isn't awesome. I mean, it puts it into like a Bloomberg quality type uh, interface. So I'm really excited to do that, but I'm still trying to figure out how to integrate our Erlang as well as uh, .NET, specifically maybe C Sharp, on top of, I wish this NFX was out there and was mature, but maybe, just maybe, um, uh, where is my, uh, that, 
project. This uh, the OTP.net. Um, maybe that might be an option. I don't know. I'm hoping to hear back from people on this because this is really important to me, as I said. Um, but let me know. Um, yeah, uh, this is this is an exciting development. I researched it using Erlang. I, I didn't realize Erlang was that. Um, and obviously, I knew, knew I couldn't quite understand why Goldman Sachs would use it, but here I am understanding that and makes sense to me now. So let me know your thoughts. Um, I know I blab here too much, but uh, I thought uh, I'd bring this to to everyone's uh, attention, and uh, let me know what you think. Talk to you later.